Hey there viewers and welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. Um, today's a uh, Steel 028 AV Super. Nice old saws. Uh, they really hold up nicely. And this one he said was uh, leaking oil really badly. And he said that the clutch drum, the sprocket, was worn out. We're going to take a look. That's usually an indication that somebody put the wrong size chain on it. Um, but I'll show you what I, what I look at and how I diagnose it and decide if that's the right, right chain on it or if it's just plain worn out because, uh, well, he's using it. So first things first, chain is bound up pretty tight so the chain breaks off and that chain does not want to move that's a lot of pressure on there let's take a peek and see what's going on pull off the brake cover this piece of paper is my feeble attempt to try to capture all the parts I'm going to need to order. Depending upon how many things I get through. It's a pretty good chance it's not going to be white by the time I'm done with going through items. So taking a look here. I mean the chain that it calls for on this bar. 325. You, know, you have your choices. Uh, 38, 325, 404. Anyway, the bar is asking for a 325 chain. You grab... Uh, chain sizing tool like this what it asks you to do is line up the rivets and it even has a picture on here it wants you to line up the rivets on the cutting tooth the back one on the cutting tooth and the back one on the leading uh, chain and see if it lines up in here 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 or here so you can get a quarter inch chain 325 3 8 or 404 so the chain is correct it's a 325 chain on a 325 bar. Here's the 3 8 The 3 8 you can see the front one is centered, but the back one is covered. So this is definitely a 325 chain. 325 bar. I'm happy with both of those. Let's see what the sprocket is. Yeah, that sprocket is eating up pretty bad. When you see grooves in the teeth like this, it's either worn out or it's got the wrong size chain in it. Um, and that'll make it uh, cut grooves like that. So it happens a lot when somebody says, hey, I've got a chain that should fit that. You know, a bar and a chain, and the bar and chain were a good match and they came off another saw. Um, but if the sprocket that was designed to run it is asking for a different size, because these are interchangeable, then you're going to have a problem. And you're going to end up with something like that. Not saying that's what happened. We're still digging into this. But let's take a peek. So we've established that the chain's 325, the bar is 325, and the drum is a 325. I don't know if you guys can see it. You might have to take my word for it. But it's also a 325. That just tells me that the, uh, that the uh, drum wore out. So this is a oil pump drive gear. So be careful with these. They're plastic. They last a long time as long as you take care of them, but they're plastic. We're going to order one of these. And he also said that it was leaking oil faster than you could put it in. 
Well, let's take a peek and see if something jumps out at us. So this is my oil pump. The back side of this oil pump is extremely loose. This, this uh, drum drives a gear. That gear drives this gear. This gear has teeth on it. It turns inside here, turning this gear, which is pulling oil from out of the crankcase. Um, up through here and yeah, but it's going to have a channel that connects all the way up to here I didn't bother looking and it's probably going to bite me in the butt if this thing was had any more oil in it I just assumed it didn't because he said it leaks so bad and yeah that's the oil tank's pretty empty Just imagining as soon as I took that out, I was going to end up getting a bath in oil. Welcome back, friends. I lost you for a second. Battery died on me. Um, so the two screws are what holds this pump in place. Um, it's sitting in there list just like that. I used a um, screwdriver and just kept wiggling back and forth. And eventually it came loose. Behind this oil pump is a gasket. This gasket has two holes behind it. This plastic piece on the end of the pump is extremely loose. The odd part is I don't see an o-ring or anything that would keep that from being loose. So let me do some digging around. I may try to just pull this apart anyway, see what we get. Let's go into the oil passage hole and spray and see where it comes out. Focus on the upper upper square hole right there. Okay. Well, so it's actually coming out of that hole right there, and then behind here it's also coming out. Um, So those two passages right there have the ability of connecting to this tank. They do connect to this tank. So this pump is obviously taking it. Um, looking at the back side of it, there's only really only a couple of ways it can work, right? So this pump is taking it in through there and out through there. I saw that, that the oil came through two holes here, right? It came through this hole. It also came through this hole. I'm expecting it to come through this hole, which matches up to this hole and this hole. But this hole here, it is blocked off by this plate. It's just odd that the gasket would have a, um, squares on the backside where it really shouldn't be pulling any um, oil from. So it's evident that any oil that's leaking would be coming out of that oil pump. Like I said, it's extremely loose. Uh, I don't believe it occurs on this model. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm very confident now. It doesn't occur on this model, but some models had a plug right up here, right next to the muffler, that that passage connected back through to here. This one doesn't have that. So this one doesn't have any cracks in the case. We just pushed uh, fluid through this hole and it came out that one. There's no cracks anywhere else that are showing. We pushed air through here um, through, through the tank side and it came out here and the bar was mounted flat. So we know that any oil that's uh, leaking out of this thing has to be coming out of that oil pump. I'm going to package up. We know we we're buying one of these. He said it runs flawlessly otherwise. We're going to sharpen the chain before he gets it back and uh, we're going to take apart that oil pump and if I can't figure that out we're going to order one of those as well. I'm kind of curious what it takes to take this apart. It may not be serviceable, but what do I got to lose, right? So I just tapped on the housing and uh, the pump itself, or I should say, I guess I should say the gear itself, came out. Um, there was a little metal barb that was sticking up here. 
Um, and I don't know if I dropped it, because I'm not seeing it right now. But it appeared to hold this in. So there was a barb inside this area here, going up through this hole. And it looked like it was held in place by something in that hole. And its purpose ended up inside this um, valve body itself. And the pump, which I'll explain this here in a second, um, has this space right here on it that it would have held this in, in place. I saw something very interesting on this. This looks like a wobble shaft. And I'm trying to figure out why. Um, all right, so on the, on the gear, we've already established that the chainsaw clutch drum is turning a gear, that's turning this gear. This gear is spinning around, so the, the engine is spinning this around, right? This is, this, as this is spinning, there's a flat spot right here, okay? That flat spot in the casing, there's a circle in the back of that housing, right? It has an, um, an in and an out. So as the flat spot passes the in port, it allows some oil to go into that hole. And then as it turns, it pushes it out the, uh, the opening. It's a, just a, a, version of a um, uh, version of a pump. So, and it's just this spinning around really fast. What I did notice is that there's a lot of play in this, uh, in this pump. So if it is leaking through, um, it would have been leaking through this area back here. So the oil is allowed to be inside this area. Okay. If it's leaking out of that area and coming into this area, the only thing that would have kept it from falling out of this area is this extremely loose plug. So I don't know if this just wore out. If it, um, if there was supposed to be an O-ring at one time, sealing it up but no matter what that right there is way too loose so i'm gonna have to look for a uh, an oil pump and a new gasket for that to make sure that it's not leaking anyway so for the 028 that's the two parts we're going to need doesn't look like i can rebuild that one and it looks like the machined portion of it is actually just too loose i was really hoping for an o-ring to be able to uh, seal that one up We'll get some uh, parts ordered for this thing and I'll get back to you as soon as they come in. So friends, the parts have arrived for this DLO 28 AV. It's been a couple of weeks. Hope I remember where everything goes. The oil pump, as you remember, leaking very bad and I'm pretty sure that the uh, tolerances in the pump have just worn out. So we got a new pump. We got some new gaskets. And I also ordered a new clutch drum with a sprocket on it. And it's a substantially better condition than the other one. Make sure everything lines up like it's supposed to. Uh, it's a 325. If it was a 38, this obviously would not fit. So let's get rid of the used parts. So let's start with getting that old gasket out of there. Check the replacement gasket before we get too far. Yeah, that looks like a good fit. out of this hole right here works its way down this channel to this groove right here all of that is covered with a gasket 
except for kind of a strange way they built this gasket. You would have thought that they would have closed that. But, uh, the pump is pumping it out of here and up through that hole right there. It makes its way up to the bar. The odd part is this right here is visible. Um, hopefully you guys can see that pick right there. That's visible, but the pump, the back side of the pump, is covered in that spot right there. So that's this center part is actually covered. Um, so there's no way that the oil that's coming out of this area will come out into this area because it's blocked off. This new pump is uh, glued. That part that I was concerned about before, there's a lot of adhesive and there's glue around there. I think that's what our problem was. Um, anyhow, the way that this is set up, the gasket was on there, it matches up with those holes, right? That passage that you're seeing up here would be against the valve body or pump body. So there's no way for that oil to come out here. Kind of strange that they built the gasket this way though. I would have thought that they would have only had a solid on this side and just holes on this side. But nevertheless, we've got it good and clean. Um, I think they used adhesive the first time. I believe that it is a, it doesn't need adhesive. We may just go ahead and put a small amount on there just in case help hold it in place and also give it a fighting chance in case i missed a piece of dirt somewhere so let's outline where the gasket's supposed to sit so there's really no reason to put gasket material anywhere else very 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 thin coat of adhesive on there i don't believe the original one had any adhesive on there i think it just fought me because it was on there so long this right here that i'm going over is a screw hole so that won't matter It's an extremely thin coat. Just put that one on. You just don't want to block those holes. So back here is where I'm more concerned about anything. But we will do the perimeter. Just don't want to, you just don't want to block those oil passages. Since the pump's not supposed to come out regularly, I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite. Tighten down T27. Even pressure all the way down. And there we go. New oil pump's installed. New one came with a roller bearing. is our oil pump drive gear. Make sure those... Before the camera died, I was having trouble getting this gear to fit back on here. Before the camera died, I was having trouble getting this gear to line up with that gear. And what I noticed was that this gear this plastic gear came off of here. Um, it's a really good fit. I just don't know why it would have ever come off. So I'm going to put a dab of super glue on it to help it bond. Just a little dab. Press this back down on there. I do not anticipate that coming loose. Let's put a little bit of lubricant on those gears. There we go, that might 
looks much better. All right, and this one should line up. There we go. Now we're talking. Looks much better. If I remember correctly, this goes next. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this had come loose before. And the reason I say that is because there's some marks in here where that those teeth would have been rubbing. Oh, I put those on backwards. And it goes just like that. And ring on. Now let's put the washer on. Really that washer is for uh, keeping the chain centered. And the E-clip. I put some oil in it. Make sure that it starts oiling. And then we're going to let it sit on something dry to see if it continues to leak oil. Alright, topped it off with some oil. Check the gas level. Alright, let's fire it up. Took a little while to prime, but yep, she's pumping. All right, friends, what we're going to do is let this sit here with no bar and chain on it, uh, just to make sure that we can see what's occurring, if any kind of siphoning is occurring with the oil, and let it sit overnight on a piece of newspaper. See, if, so if it does leak, the newspaper will absorb quite a bit of it, and you can actually see what kind of quantity leaks out. So I'll check it in the morning. If it's uh, still leaking, I'll get back to you in the video. Um, otherwise, at success, successful, we saw where it was leaking from. We changed out that part, cleaned it up. It should be working great. And obviously, if not, it'll show up before I even post the video. Um, so anyway, thanks for hanging out with me for the day. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, I would really appreciate a uh, thumbs up or a subscribe. Uh, both of those help the channel tremendously. It tells me what kind of content you guys like and that tells me what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out.